I'm completely obsessed with Agatha all along. But here's the thing, I'm not a comic book fan, so I thought why not create a review series for people like me who want to dive into the show without all the comic book references and speculation about future plot lines. I'll be focusing purely on what the show presents, one episode at a time. Now before we jump in, let's make sure we're all on the same page about where the show starts in the MCU timeline. First off, we last saw Agatha in WandaVision. She posed as the friendly neighbour in Wanda's fabricated world, but was, in reality, a powerful witch using the Darkhold, an ancient dangerous book of magic. Agatha wanted to steal Wanda's powers, but by the end of the show, Wanda strips her of her magic and traps her in the persona of Agnes, the cheerful neighbour. And that's where Agatha's story stopped, until now. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness showed Wanda collapsing a mountain on herself and destroying all copies of the Darkhold, leaving Agatha stuck in an illusion with seemingly no way out. Alright, now that we're all caught up, let's dive into the first episode of Agatha All Along, titled Seekest Thou the Road. Opening. As we talk about the episode, there'll be spoilers ahead, so if you haven't watched the episode yet, hit pause, go watch it, and come back. All good? Great. Let's go. So, spoiler straight off the bat. The first two thirds of this episode is an illusion on top of the illusion Wanda put on Agatha. However, all the people that she talks to are not under any illusions at all. So when Herb says, Hey neighbor. He is talking to what he thinks is Agnes in the real world. It's fascinating to watch the line between illusion and reality blur throughout the episode. But the show opens with what appears to be Agatha, or more precisely, Agnes, driving down a grey, empty road, humming a soon-to-be-familiar tune. We find out that Agnes is in cop, recently reinstated after a suspension, as only she can solve the case at hand, apparently. Her comment about the suspension of my undeserved disciplinary action You punched the suspect. Oh. is an obvious nod to her showdown with Wanda in WandaVision. Agatha clearly sees Wanda as a criminal, and the whole punished for doing my job thing is a neat character insight. The crime scene. They head down to investigate the body in the woods. Apart from the joke about her being She is dead though, isn't she, Herb? Oh, she's really most sincerely dead. Never know. Which is an MCU in-joke about the characters never staying dead for long. We learn that the woman was crushed and had a library book card on her. The victim's blackened hands and feet clearly disturb Agnes as she fiddles with her collar, a subtle cue that something deeply is bothering her. When Agnes investigates around the crime scene, she finds a pendant in the water and secretly pockets it, hiding it from Herb. Her reaction when they turn the body over is interesting. Her question, Who are you? seems directed both at the victim and herself. Herb notices Agnes's odd behaviour, saying, You don't seem like yourself. Which hits a nerve because deep down, Agnes knows she isn't herself. Agatha is still buried beneath the surface. Then we get the opening credits of The Illusion, which features the same tune Agnes was humming earlier. Strange events. Up until now, it's been a fairly straightforward murder mystery, aside from the fact that the main character is, we know, under mind control. But now things begin to unravel. Agnes heads to the library to investigate the book, only to find out it's been stolen. This book wasn't checked out, it was stolen three years ago. Even worse, all the other copies of the book on the shelf have been torched. Oddly, it's only that specific bookshelf that was targeted. Next, at the police station, we meet Agent Rio Vidal. I actually don't think they call her Rio in this episode, but if I missed it, let me know in the comments. There's an immediate tension between Agnes and Rio. Agnes clearly hates Rio, while Rio, on the other hand, exudes a seductive charm. At one point, Rio taunts Agnes. Is this really how you see yourself? And even suggests magic may be involved with the crime prompting Agnes to remark that cases like these are always about the secrets buried beneath. We also learn a few crucial details. First, the pendant is actually a locket, featuring the maiden mother crone with a lock of hair inside, which deeply unsettles Agnes, just as seeing the blackened fingers did. 
Secondly, the library card refers to the Dark Old. The reason the books were torched were likely due to the fact that Wanda destroyed every copy of the book. Third, Agnes had a child named Nicholas Scratch, and something tragic must have happened to him. And finally, Agnes can't seem to remember traveling or why she harbors such intense hatred for Rio. Teen. Next, we get to meet Teen. I'll admit, I initially started watching this show because Joe Locke was in it, but no regrets, as this has been a fantastic ride so far. Like Rio, Teen isn't named in the episode, but for simplicity, we'll call him Teen. He breaks into Agnes's home, flees from her, and ends up getting hit by a car driven by Mrs. Davis. Agnes is horrified when it happens, hinting at a personal trauma, possibly linked to the loss of her son in some way. Once she realizes Teen is fine, she immediately snaps back to her usual snarky self. You alive? Good, because I'm arresting you now, and I want you real alert for that. The banter between Agnes and Teen in the interrogation room is fun, especially with moments like, Irrespective of your peers in a fulfilling home life, but you were fresh out of both. <sighs> but the tone shifts when Teen mentions that he's looking for the road, and Agnes notices something unsettling. His fingers are black. The wheels start coming off. At this point, everything starts to unravel for Agnes. What Agnes thought were pictures of a body are revealed to be just flowers, and the mirror where she thought Rio was standing is actually just a painting. Then Team begins casting a spell, gradually revealing more of the living room and the real chair he is sitting on. Spooked, Agnes detains Teen and rushes to the morgue to check on the body for herself. When she arrives, the slab is empty. It's only when Agnes forces herself to remember that the body shows back up and she recalls her hair being scarlet. Then finally she notices the toe tag, which is the library card, and Wanda's name written in scarlet, marking her as the last owner of the Darkhold. At this moment, Rio appears, helping Agnes put the pieces together. She confirms that Wanda and all the Darkhold copies are gone, leaving Agatha trapped within the warped spell. Breaking free. Agnes begins to claw her way out of the spell, shifting through the different personas she embodied during Wanda's original enchantment in Westview. Eventually, she finds herself back in black and white, right where it all started. Rio then says, There are two Jane Doe's in this case. This prompts Agnes to check the toe tag once more, where she sees her name appear in purple, just above Wanda's, because she was the last holder of the Darkhold, before Wanda. Finally, with this revelation, she is able to break free from the spell. Catching up. Now fully exposed, Agatha must figure out what's real and what's an illusion. She heads to her neighbour, who confirms that she's been there for about three years. Herb mentions that she's been acting more unlike herself in the last few days. You haven't been yourself the past few days. Almost like you got bit by the true crime bug. And when Herb comments on how powerful she's looking, Agatha stops her rant and immediately sets off in search of what she's lost. However, she quickly discovers that she cannot summon any magic and her basement has been stripped bare. I got mugged, mister. She took every little bit of power I had and left me with household appliances. But even in her weakened state, she's already determined to regain her full power. Oh, and of course, there's a bunny. A noise from upstairs draws Agatha's attention leading her to find Teen tied up in the cupboard. If Teen is real, then she realizes so is Rio. Fight. Rio bursts in, quite literally, and the two immediately clash. Although Agatha is clearly outmatched, she uses her cunning to convince Rio the fight would be far more interesting if she had her full strength. Just let me get my purple back and then come find me. Surprisingly, Rio agrees and then delivers a warning. The Salem Seven are after Agatha. As Rio leaves, Agatha accuses Rio of having no heart, to which Rio coolly replies, Yes, I do. It's black. And it beats for you. Before licking Agatha's hand to heal the knife wound. With Rio gone, Agatha suddenly remembers Teen still being tied up. Oh, right. You. This first episode was wild packed with hidden layers and setups. 
It's no surprise they aired episode one and two together. There is so much groundwork being laid here, but not a lot of it makes sense. Not without at least episode two. But from the mystery of the locket and Nicholas Scratch, to the unresolved tension with Rio and the looming threat of the Salem Seven, there's a lot to unravel. And we'll dive into it more in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this non-comic book centric review of Agatha all along. If you did, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss episode two's review. And as always, thanks for watching and let's see what other secrets we can uncover next time on Nerdy Investigations.